Kirk Shiver, McCoy was speaking with Mr. Spock's voice. <laughs> Show. Greetings, I'm Spud Goodman. Welcome one and all to my program. I fully expect you to be a satisfied customer after sitting through what we have in store for you tonight. For starters, how about Drew Carey? Well, you're probably saying, yeah, how about him? Well, he's on the show. I hung out with him. And now you're probably saying, Drew's pretty cool, but what the hell ever happened to Donnie Most? You know, Ralph Mouth from Happy Days? Well, you'll find out as I spend some quality time with him, too. Musically, you are in for a treat because we have for you the one, the only, Elvez. So stay tuned, why don't you? Spud, Darcy here has come to me with a fabulous idea. She has a suggestion for juicing the show up a bit. Oh, really? Darcy never mentioned anything about this to me. Oh, Spud, honey, we didn't want to burden you with small details. Uh, Mr. Larson and I know that you're the star of the show and we have to keep your mind free of distractions. That's right, Spud. Anyway, Darcy has a suggestion for changing the tone of the show. You know, warm it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that Rosie O'Donnell is killing all the audiences with this nice thing. Yeah, I've been studying her show mm -hmm. and it's clear to me that warm and fuzzy works. You know, I figure with a little tweaking, we can tap into some of Rosie's audience. God, if we could get 2% of them, we could triple our ratings. Now, let me get this straight. You want me to rip off someone else's act. Spud, honey, I think that in show business, it's called influence. Yeah, like there's anything original on TV these days, you know? I mean, let's face it, Rosie is ripping off the mommies. Darcy, I gotta tell you, I'm a little hurt here that you didn't run this by me first. Look. Darcy was going to, but I asked her to keep a lid on it, you know, till the three of us could talk together. Yeah. I mean, she's quite a gal, yeah, Spud. Yeah. I'm well aware of this, all right? Hey, I'll just see you a little later. I gotta get out of here. All right. So, do you think, uh, think he's buying into this? I don't know. I still think it would have been better if I could have talked to him alone. Nah, nah, he's fine. He'll be all right. By the way, you busy for lunch? No. Spud has to leave to get the oil changed in his car at noon. Great. Here's five bucks. Why don't you hop on down to Subway and pick us up a couple sandwiches, all right? All right? Hey, I'll be waiting here for you. Sure. Uh, and uh, hold the mail. Thanks a lot for taking a little walk with me, Mrs. Goodman. I think I'm going to feel a lot better now. It'll all work out, trust oh, me. Man. I know. I know it will. We are all blessed with special people in our lives. A good friend is something to treasure. Well, I should have known that someone on TV who doesn't even know me could ever be my best friend. <laughs> I know. Just call me stupid. Well, you've learned a valuable lesson. Next time you see an ad for the Psychic Friends Network, you'll know that they're not your real friend. What best friend would ask anyone to buy $3,000 worth of lottery tickets? I really thought I was going to win, Mrs. Goodman. When my psychic friend told me that I was going to be a millionaire in 72 hours, you know what I did? I rushed right out and I put a new accordion on layaway. Just call them and tell them you miscalculated your finances and won't be needing a new accordion at this time. I really wanted that new accordion, Mrs. Goodman. I mean, last night I laid awake the whole night thinking of that accordion. And I just can't believe my psychic friend would lead me on like that. I mean, the $3,000 was all I had in savings. Sometimes you have to beware of false prophets. I say, stick to your horoscope in the morning paper. <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind me dropping by without Colin first again, but I needed to run something by you. Mother, the little rat is back. You want me to pat him down and see if he's wearing a wire? Spooge, you wouldn't be bothering us if we weren't hooked up to that stupid box. Probably not. 
with having to walk through those nettles bushes in your driveway, you do know they sting like hell. The nettles are really a cheap security device, don't you think? And the dog do from our docks and Biffy, and the slugs crawling around, and the seagulls relieving themselves, it gets a little messy around here. Crooks today don't want to get their hands dirty, Spooge. Don't say anything that will incriminate us. Listen, you punk, I've seen Prince of the City seven times. Henry, calm down. It's just food's good enough. He's harmless. What I wanted to ask you was your take on Rosie O'Donnell. I'm getting a lot of pressure from my producer to try her approach. You know, perky and nice. I love Rosemarie. She was the best thing on the Dick Van Dyke show. Honey, he said Rosie O'Donnell, the woman with the program in the afternoon. I like that show. Sure she kisses the butts of her guests. You ought to try it. It couldn't hurt. Even singing those old TV theme songs? I mean, I have a hard enough time remembering my social security number, let alone some song to an old TV show. Mother, can I sing the theme to the firing line? Or how about Nova? Henry here is a big supporter of PBS. I could never pull this off. I mean, nothing against Rosie, but it's just not me. What do you got to lose? You know you're going to be canceled. We're not the only Nielsen family that hates your guts. You could do a lot worse than to have Rosie O'Donnell as a role model. Okay, okay. Thanks for the input, I guess. I'm out of here. Mother, if my watch is right, the seagull should be circling the property right about now. Let's look at that joker getting pelted. Good thing he's wearing a hat. Drew Carey and musical guest Elvez when we return. What can you say about someone who looks like the guy who changes your oil at Speedy Lube, but has become a massive monster TV star? Okay, maybe he couldn't make Aaron Spelling's starting lineup, but he's doing more than all right. He has a book that's been out for a while that you may want to check out, Dirty Jokes and Beer. Here he is, Drew Carey. All right, Drew, I, I gotta tell you before we get going here. Okay. With my show, we don't have a lot of like major musical productions to open the show. I mean, I'm lucky if I get the damn name of the program up on the screen. Are you willing to slum with me for just a second? I'm slumming, baby. I'm all right, with you. all right, let's roll. I love the slum. All right, now I've always dreamed of uh, like having to do my own book signing, but yeah. the problem is, I hear like they make you write the book first. That's the bad. That's the drag part. Yeah. <laughs> so when you wrote this book, Dirty Jokes and Beer, did it like cut into the free time? I mean, that must have been a drag. Yeah, I wrote it like uh, I wrote a lot of it like the first week of May till June 15th and it was like and uh, actually to the end of June and uh, like 14 12 hours a day writing 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 no ghostwriter no ghostwriter did it all that's myself. for the record we have that on tape no all ghostwriter right, super I, want, I didn't want to pay the money no that's, that's <laughs> the yes. hey did the publisher uh, get on you to toss in a few explosive uh, bombshells about the sex life or did they tell you like tone it down because I hear they do either one they wanted to tone it down the dirty words and they warned me if I put the sex up in there they, they mm -hmm. uh, no they, they wanted me to tone it down more than anything else and what'd you say uh, I toned down a couple things just to, I mean, they were such minor stupid things, mm -hmm. you know, they just made me mad. Mm -hmm. I toned down a few things, but not, it's pretty much exactly the way I wanted it to be. Well, really, I, I wish I could tell you what they asked me to tone down, but I can't because we're on TV. But it's the Spud Goodman show. You can pretty much do anything. Oh, really? That's they wanted a sad me, thing. They wanted me to change. They didn't like the word is so that right? I changed well, maybe, it to you know, Beaver even Jam. for the Spud Goodman show, I don't know if we can say that, but you know, we there. just did. I changed it to Beaver Jam. All right, there you okay go. With that. All right, yeah. super. Speaking of juice, if this were South Park or Jerry Springer, maybe we could say that word. But with our ratings, no way can I slip in a <laughs> or even. <laughs> is it a lot easier now that you're a big star? I gotta ask you this to meet women, because I've heard that it really helps, you know, the social life to be like really successful. Go figure. It does. Is really. that true? Yeah, it's really amazing. It doesn't help you get have sex more, but it, it helps you meet the girls. At least the opportunity to get your toe in the door. Yeah, I mean, you, you get to meet them and say hello and go mm -hmm. on a date and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. everything else, you're pretty much on your own. It's pretty mm -hmm. much the same way as it was when I was in high school and college, which is nothing. So yeah. you're still you're still facing a grade at the end of the day. Right. All right, forget yeah. that. Hey, do you have any plans yeah. to turn the book into like a TV movie of the week? Maybe have like Tori Spelling as an escort service girl or something. What do you think? Oh, the uh, poor little escort service yeah. girl. Yeah, turn the heart of gold. Is this book gonna be? A movie? Are we going to see it? Uh, no, they could turn. There's some short stories at the end. They can make those in the movies, maybe, or a couple of them, maybe, if they could s stretch them out. But I don't think the rest of the book really goes like the 101 joke. They can't. Some of the stuff you just can't make into a movie. All right, that's for the record. Okay, Drew, what's your most memorable moment as yourself to this point? What are we talking about? 
Oh, um, I think this is what this yeah, is. I it. figured out. So that's the Spuddy okay. Goodman show is my most memorable moment. Right. I can't think of a better, more. I, I've always longed to do this. Uh, I, I, I'd buy that totally. All right, long term <laughs> goals. What are we talking about, long term goals, besides getting out of here and grabbing a beer? What are we looking at? Um, I have no long term goals. I want to keep, keep doing the show, get my contracts up, mm -hmm. make my little money, and then mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe sit around. Mm -hmm. You think I could like sit around with you sometime too? Yeah. Maybe like take some of your stale food pool? thrown away on the car. Yeah, obviously, you guys get good food at ABC, right? Great food on the show. Uh, Warner Brothers, it's a Warner Brothers show. And Warner oh. Brothers, we get really good food in the back end. Yeah. I should tell you what food's like in Cable Hill, but that's another topic. There you have it. Bagels. Does they get a lot of bagels? Bagels, you, you wish. Rolls. Oh. We're talking Wonder Bread crust. Oh. Anyway, all right. The, the man is Drew Carey. The book is Dirty Jokes and Beer. Check it out. I highly recommend it. All right? Thanks, bud. I had heard and read a lot about our musical guest tonight. But I must say, I was unprepared for his amazing performance. You may want to check out his CD, G.I.I. Blues on Big Pop Records. It's very cool. Here he is, Elvez. Time takes a cigarette, puts it in your mouth. You pull on your finger and another finger, then your cigarette. The water wall is calling, it lingers, then you forget. Ho, 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 you're a rock and roll suicide. There must be lights shining brighter somewhere. Got to be birds flying higher in a sky more blue. If I can dream of a better land, where well, all my brothers want hands in hand. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why won't my dream come true? Oh, why? There must be peace and understanding sometimes. Strong with the courage that will blow away the doubt and fear. If I can dream of a warmer sun, whoa, keep shining on everyone. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why won't that sun shine through? Wow! We're trapped in a cloud. With too much rain, we're caught in a world that's troubled with pain. But as long as a man has the strength to dream, he can redeem his soul and fly. High, 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 deep in my heart, there's a beckoning question. I'm certain that the answer's gonna come someday Out there in the darkness, there's a beckoning candle oh, While I can stand, while I can walk, while I can speak While I can talk, while I can dream Please let my dream come true TV legend Don Most, right after these messages. I don't think so, Sparky. The capital of North Dakota is not Minot. 
Ah, what do you know? Of course it is. What is Bismarck? Samuel, I'm really getting sick of this what is Jeopardy crap. God, I hate that show. Jeremy here worships Alex Trebek. He knows everything. He's so smart, we think he could be an alien or something. Well, I firmly believe that watching Jeopardy each night has added 50 points to my IQ. Congratulations. So you made it to 75. Big deal. That smarmy know-it-all Trebek is a real pain in the ass. God, who'd want to hang out with that guy? Do you think Alex sweats and goes to the bathroom like regular people? Now, I don't think Alex sweats. He's a pretty cool customer. Hey, I'm missing a piece of pie here. I think I'm ahead. Uncle Sparky, I think that you are a real poor sport. I cannot see how you can be ahead in this game. Yeah, Jerry and I are ahead of you. God, what a couple of whiners. Jeez. It reminds me of when Spud and I were growing up and you would shoot baskets with us as kids. I'd be ahead by H-O-R-S to maybe H-O, and you would suddenly leave before I could declare victory. You beat me in a game of horse? Ha! Ah, listen, I was second team honorable mention all county in junior high. They call me the next Hank Lissetti. You told Jerry you were fourth team honorable mention all county in junior high. So, second or fourth, what's the difference? Spud, I watch Rosie O'Donnell's show all the time. It's a great show, Mr. But... Goodman, you know, I can understand where Larson's coming from. In the television industry, if something works, you clone it. Yeah. But I just can't see you pulling this one off. If I could get Rosie's A-level guess, I could learn to be warm and fuzzy, too. When did Mr. Big Time Producer come up with this idea? Well, you know, actually, I think it was Darcy's. I knew it. I told you about that woman, Spud. She is going to destroy you. You know, I've been trying to tell you that she and, and Mr. Larson, and you know, they've been kind of seeing each other and... Oh, no, um, no, no, look, look, look. I know she's been hanging out with Larson, but that woman is madly in love with me. She's just watching my back. Hey, did I tell you guys what she gave me for our five month anniversary? A brand new set of golf clubs. She thinks if I learn how to play golf, he could really help my career. He may have pulled a Terrence Malick and dropped out of sight for a decade or so, but he's back now and in fighting shape, I might add. Say hello to Donnie Most. All right, Don, now you were a seminal figure in a lot of people's lives as Ralph Mouth on Happy Days. Uh, was it a burden? What do you think? A burden? Well, only when, um, when I first left the show, it was a bit of a, I had an ax to grind because I wanted to show that I was a lot more than Ralph in real life and not only in real life as an actor, so it became, became tough, you know? But you know, you hit a chord there because I would, I mean, I got to have a show where I'm more than Spud Goodman, let me tell you. So, I mean, I know so what you're talking about. you relate to this. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, you know, but the irony is, is that the public out there is totally open to seeing me in other roles. But the industry, they don't give the public any credit. They think that you're, they're all a bunch of idiots or something. You know, like you have the imagination of, of a, of a one-year-old. They think we're all idiots? That's, unfortunately, the industry, that's the, their outlook, you know? So we have, to, we have to prove to them otherwise, don't we? Do we? And we can do it. We all right, OK, it. all right, But I, I have a lot of faith in you. This is unbelievable. Donnie Moe says he has faith in me. A live human has never said this to me before. I'm feeling a real bond growing here. Maybe he can, like, adopt me or be my big brother and take me bowling and stuff. Now, hey, it appeared that uh, Ralph's wardrobe was uh, fairly consistent. Plaid shirts and uh, kind of the er early prototype dockers. Uh, did Gary Marshall, he got off cheap with the wardrobe cost, didn't he? You're right. I mean, I never thought about that, but that's where he was saving his money. You know, that's why he's a rich man. I'm betting that Donnie still has Gary's phone number. Maybe this would be a good time to ask him to pass on my idea for a Happy Days, the next generation show. Now in the 90s, uh, the 70s cultural scene is, uh, is somewhat nostalgic to a lot of people. Could you ever see an updated Happy Days where instead of like Arnold's uh, drive-in, the characters were like hanging out at Studio 54? What do you think? <laughs> what do you mean? It, oh, back like an updated in the version. 70s, like in the disco. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, the disco see, thing. We were, the sev we were in the 70s doing a show about the 50s. So right. Now in the 90s do a show about that's the 70s. My cons that's my question. Yeah, well, it, the, the time frame is right. We got that 20-year interval, so I think, you know, I better, Are I the better participants raise this. Willing? What are we're we talking raise about? raise this to the producers. That's the tr tricky thing, getting the participants, getting all those, that cast back together again to Not do the show. Not gonna happen? I don't, I wouldn't hold my breath. Damn, it figures. Okay, now I track down Richard Thomas and pitch him an idea for a new Waltons that takes place in a public housing area in Detroit. Tons of jerky camera work and a lot of love. It could be huge. I'm out of here. 
Who will win the game of Trivial Pursuit? The spellbinding answer in just a moment. This is the Spud Goodman Show. Oh, I would love to have dinner with you tonight, Mr. Larson. But I already have plans with Spud. How about tomorrow night? Yeah, tomorrow night will work, I guess. Say, I was wondering if you could look at my proposal for the daytime talk show. Now, I know you have some friends at the network. Yeah, I'll take it home with me tonight, all right? I feel really strongly that with the right opportunity, this show could be really big. Say, maybe we should meet later for a drink after I get back from dinner. What about Spud? Oh, I can feel myself coming down with the flu. Oh, really? No, not really. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Look, uh, Darcy, I, I don't want to dampen your spirits on this project, but I don't think Spud would make a very good daytime talk show host. I mean, he drives the housewives away in droves. Women hate him. I've even got some research here that could prove it. Uh, you want to take a look at it? I am aware of Spud's appeal to females. Mr. Larson, I would host the talk show. Hmm. You, huh? Yeah, I guess I could run it by my buddy that's in development at Fox. I mean, you never know. Really? Oh, my God. That would be great. Okay, here's an easy one. Who invented the microwave? Ooh, good question. You know, I think I heard this on Jeopardy just last week. Only huh. a moron wouldn't know this one. Uh, it, it's on the tip of my tongue. Eh, time's up. God, I can't believe how stupid you guys are. Oh, like you knew the answer. Yeah, what's the answer? Herbert Sorensen, okay? Herbert Sorensen. I think you cheated and peeked at the answer. There's no way you knew that without cheating. Hey, it's a good thing we're not living in the days of the Old West. Otherwise, you two would be laying on the ground with a 45 slug between your eyes. 